number of different recordings, and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a student looking for a host family and a housing advisor. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Um, I understand you help fix up students with host families. That's right. Are you interested in?、Uh... Yes. Well, please sit down, and I'll just take a few details.、Oh, thank you. Right now, what name is it? Jenny Chan. Can you spell that, please? Yes, J E N N Y C H A N. Right, and what is your present address? The student's name is Jenny Chan, so Jenny Chan has been written on the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully, and answer questions one to five. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Um, I understand you help fix up students with host families. That's right. Are you interested in?、Uh... Yes. Well, please sit down, and I'll just take a few details.、Oh, thank you. Right now, what name is it? Jenny Chan. Can you spell that, please? Yes, J E N N Y C H A N. Right, and what is your present address? Sea View Guest House, fourteen Hill Road. Okay, and do you know the phone number there? Yes, I, I have it here. Um, two two three seven six seven six. But I'm only there after about seven p.m. So when would be the best time to catch you? I suppose between nine and let me see, half past before I leave for the college. Great. And can I ask you your age? I've just had my nineteenth birthday. And how long would you want to stay with the host family? I'm planning on staying a year, but at the moment I'm definitely here for four months only. I have to get an extension to my permit. You're working on it?、Mm. Fine. And what will be your occupation while you're in the UK? Studying English. And what would you say your level of English is? <laughs> um. Good, I think. I'd like to say advanced, but my written work is below the level of my spoken, so I suppose it's intermediate.、Mm, certainly, your spoken English is advanced. Anyway, which area do you think you would prefer? Um. Well, I'm studying right in the center, but I'd really like to live in the northwest. That shouldn't be a great problem. We usually have lots of families up there. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten.
Now listen and answer questions six to ten. And do you have any particular requirements for diet? Well, I'm nearly a vegetarian, not quite. Shall I say you are? It's probably easier that way. <laughs> that would be best. Anything about your actual room? Uh, I would prefer my own facilities. En suite, is that right?、Mm -hmm. And also, if it's possible, a TV. And I'd also like the house to have a real garden, rather than just a yard, somewhere I could sit and be peaceful. Is that all? Well. I'm really serious about improving my English, so I'd prefer to be the only guest, if that's possible. No other guests. Yes, you get more practice that way. Anyway, obviously, all this is partly dependent on how much you're willing to pay. What did you have in mind? I was thinking in terms of about sixty to eighty pounds a week, but I'd go up to a hundred if it was something special. Well, I don't think we'd have any problems finding something for you. Oh, good. And when would you want it for? I'd like to move in approximately two weeks. Let me see. It's the tenth today, so if we go for the Monday, it's the twenty-third of March. Yes. Right. Good. And if I could ask one last question. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a guide talking to a group of visitors about a national park. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. Welcome to Byron National Park. I am Jim Carson, your tour guide for the trip. First, I'd like to give you some basic information about the park. Covering seven thousand acres of land and spanning across three states, Byron National Park was established to protect the area's most spectacular scenic values. With unique geological features, natural history, and native plant and animal life, it is an ideal destination for recreation as well as research purposes. The park has a breathtaking waterfall connecting the longest river in the country, but it is most renowned for having the largest subtropical rainforest worldwide. There are many layers of tall, medium, and low vegetation. Growing with seasonal variations in the park, it is a place where the air seems green. Ardent hikers can find an awesome array of options here. Apart from the dense green rainforest, tourists can also hike along the mountain trail. Despite the stunning view, taking photos is not advised on the way up. I'm afraid, as one might get distracted, and the narrow trail by the sheer cliff is quite dangerous. When you reach the top of the mountain, there is nothing better than having a picnic under the trees with your family. Accompanied mostly by wildlife, walkers as well as cyclists may find the bush track a good choice for having a tranquil time to themselves. As your tour guide, I suggest that only expert hikers take the creek circuit, because its beautiful and inspiring scenery through the subtropical jungle. Is paralleled by its physical challenges. 
A list of transport is available within the park. Bicycles are a popular choice, as it is the most flexible way to get around. Electric trams are temporarily closed for maintenance. Boat trips down the river are an ideal way to spend a tranquil afternoon. Rest assured that transport within the park is covered in the bill. Extreme sports is another highlight of the park. There are, for adventurous grown-ups, especially those who are comfortable with having a racing heart, scary as it may sound, it is actually safe to participate in extreme sports under strict instructions and close supervision. Abseiling is available regardless of the weather. It is a fun way to overcome fear of heights, gain new skills and get an adrenaline rush. Bungee jumping and paragliding are also available, except for during the summer. At this point, you might worry about meals here. Well, even though there is only one restaurant in the park at the moment, the variety of dishes is astonishing. There are two meals included in the price. Just get your meal ticket at the reception before dining. Also, there is no need to make reservations or worry about availability since there are plenty of tables. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. During your stay here, you might want to know what there is to do. Let's turn to the plan so I can familiarise you with the layout of the park. Most tourists would choose to stay in our guest house, located in the southeast corner. It features 63 tastefully appointed guest rooms, many of which offer spectacular views of the park. You'll find a home away from home at our guest house. But for those who want to experience the natural beauty up close, there is also a campsite. When you get out of the guest house, go straight ahead, turn right at the end of the road. To your left, there is a campsite amongst the trees where you could spend a night under the stars together with owls and chipmunks. If you look at the top left of the plan, you will notice a picnic area. You can either bring your own food, or we can deliver food to you. Barbecue is an option. The business centre is situated directly opposite the picnic area. It provides flexible, fully serviced offices, conferencing suites, meeting rooms, and is equipped with the latest multimedia facilities. Wired, as well as wireless, high-speed internet is available within the entire premises. The centre is designed to cater to both individual travellers and corporate groups. Visitors can also go to the museum, which holds a vast collection that exhibits local history and a natural habitat. You start from the guest house, just turn left at the first conjunction, then walk past the tea house, turn right, you'll see the museum after making the third right. Have you found it? Pretty easy, right? To spend a delightful afternoon with a book and a fresh cup of coffee, you can go to the only cafe in the park. From the guest house, you go straight, then take the second right, and you'll see the cafe right in front of you. You might want to check out our all-season tennis court, which offers instruction for all ages and skill levels. It is located right opposite the cafe. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a student called Jerry discussing a pedagogy course with his tutor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Jerry, how did it go with preparing your lessons? Is there anything you would like to discuss? Well, this is actually the first time that I have ever taught in an elementary classroom. After eight years of learning pedagogy, I want to practice what I've learned in an instructive manner but I'm a bit stuck right now. You know the topic I want them to research is a bit hard for pupils. I'm afraid that they won't be able to handle it on their own. So I need new ideas on designing more effective teaching methods. Mr. Carter, do you have any suggestions? Well, you should probably read this book called Professional Learning, written by J.K. Simmons. He is a professor who just transferred here last semester, but is already popular amongst the students for his creative teaching methods. There is an extensive range of learning approaches mentioned in the book, including approaches for team research, which might be helpful to you. You mean dividing the students into groups to do research? I've never thought of this before. How does it work? Professor Simmons has already demonstrated how efficient this approach can be. Basically, it aims to increase cooperation between students so they can present the results in a collaborative fashion. It helps them to develop their own voice and perspective. I'll check out the book as soon as possible. It seems I can borrow some of the essential concepts and work them into my course design. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Well, I was thinking maybe I could use both observation and non-observation as a part of my teaching methodology. Could you take a look at my teaching plan? Sure. What kind of observational methods do you have in mind? For the observational part, I intend to include two approaches. First, the pupils can assess each other's behaviour. I feel that reviewing fellow students through criteria-based reference evaluation allows constructive feedback. It can also improve their understanding of the subject material. That's a smart move for a large class that would be hard to observe all by yourself. Also, you might want to get the feedback from several different individuals rather than just one. So how do you plan to carry out the peer assessments? Oh, every pupil will be required to write a diary, which includes group projects, presentations and in-class discussions. They'll put down their remarks. I'll collect them on a regular basis, which can also help me see whether they can keep up or not. Good. What else do you intend to do? Besides that, I also plan to do video recording. I've already purchased a camera, just in case I miss anything important. I can go back and review their performances any time I want. Would you record every in-class activity? No, I'll just keep track of an in-class simulation which would require every pupil to fully participate. Students will act as members of a city council meeting. 
discussing issues like whether or not prohibition should be instated in the United States. This kind of teaching method is both inspiring and challenging. I can't wait to see how yours works out. Do send me a copy of the assessment afterwards, will you? No problem. So, what do you have in mind for the non-observational approaches? Well, my plan is to quantify the statistics. Numbers do not lie. It is the most direct way to measure their performance. See how well they've learned. Where does the data come from? I'll evaluate the test results, including the midterm, final exam, and pop quizzes, which would only take up about 40% of the overall assessment. Sounds like a lot of tests and assignments. Please remember that you don't want to wear out your students. Keeping them engaged is the key to efficient learning. Once they are exhausted, they just stop trying. Oh, I haven't thought about that. You are right. I don't want to frighten them with tons of assignments and exams. I'll make note of that. Thanks for the advice. I remember last time you mentioned questionnaires, right? That's true, but it is not for my students. In fact, they have to design their own questionnaires and choose the respondents using the internet. As a complement of other teaching activities, it would deepen the creative learning process. Is that all? Oh, the pupils will have to conduct interviews of their own, and for this, they get to choose anyone they like, including relatives, friends, and acquaintances to answer the questions. Seems to me that you have figured out most of your teaching methods, but you still need to polish some of the activities. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a university librarian giving a talk to new students. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. OK, are you all settled? Well, first of all, welcome to Cardiff University. I'm here to explain what we can offer you. Now, as a new student at the university, you will probably need some sort of guidance to help you to use the library effectively to study and research. Some of you have asked about a guided tour but we find this rather muddles people. So in this first week, we run a series of talks which focus on different aspects of the library and its resources. You'll also find that to get the most out of the library, you really do need to be computer literate. And so all this term, we run small classes, which will bring you up to speed on how to access the computer loaded information. OK, now let me give you an outline of what's available to you. You'll find that the computers are increasingly used as a research tool. Many students do most of their research on the internet and the library computers are permanently online. Having found what you need, you'll find you can readily save texts on your personal computer space to print off when you need. You might think that it is the fastest way to get information, but the links can be slow. Clearly, you can find lots on there, but much of it is useless information, as it is from highly debatable sources, so be critical. 
You'll also find that the library has loaded several CD-ROMs onto the computers from specialist reference sources, such as the MLA. It means we can expand what we offer you at very little extra cost and saves us having to invest in more and more books. The CD-ROMs contain exactly the same information as the reference books, as the two are updated together. Now, most of you will need to refer to journal articles in your work, and you'll find you can also access these online, and we encourage you to do so. Clearly, some of you will find the printed version more accessible as it sits on the shelves, but I'm afraid the intention is to phase these out eventually. However, you will still be able to print off a version of the text rather than photocopying the journal pages. So you must get used to working online. Naturally, we do still have the full range of classic reference books, additional to the CD-ROMs for you to use, and there are several copies of each one. This is because some of you may prefer to borrow a book rather than sit in the library. There is a restricted loan time on these so that they are not missing from the shelves for too long. Although there is a section manager for each part of the library, they are very busy. And so, if you do get stuck looking for things, you should ask the relevant cataloguing assistant. As your training supervisor, I just oversee your induction and will not be around after this initial week. Some of you may be interested to know that the library is offering specialised training sessions on writing a dissertation. Obviously, this is not relevant to those of you who are undergraduates. It is just for postgraduates. Your department will discuss the planning stage of the dissertation, i.e. what you're going to do with you, and we will focus on the structure of it. However, the training will also include some time on the computers. I realise most of you know how to organise files, but we can show you the different ways to run data programs. Your tutors will tell you at the outset how to set out the chapters they require, but you will need to ask them how they would like you to organise the bibliography because it varies depending on your subject area. When you've got something together, the trainer here will look through the draft version for you to see if it's okay. And one final point, for those of you who have registered from abroad, we can offer individual sessions on dissertations if you feel you need them. If you require language lessons, then they are available from the International Centre next to the Law Department. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.